Well, good evening, good evening, and welcome to The Conversation. I'm Kenny Roche, and I'm so glad you're joining us tonight. We're going to have an awesome talk in just a couple of minutes. So if you're so moved, please click the like and the share button. Call someone, tell them. We're getting ready to have a great conversation, but I'm glad you are here. Welcome to The Conversation. It's going to be a great night. Listen, good evening and again, welcome to the conversation. For those who are joining us for the first time, I'm Kenny Roche, and I'm so glad you've joined us today for this conversation. And it is going to be great tonight. I'm so excited about our guest. And without any further delay, we're going to bring on our special guest tonight. And I believe this is going to be one you will enjoy. So our special guest tonight is Mark Lindsay. He is the CEO of the Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club right here in Savannah. And so we want to welcome him to the conversation. And right there in your homes, in your offices, wherever you are, on your phones, your computers, your iPad, please join me in welcoming our guest for tonight, Mr. Mark Lindsay. Hi, Kenny. Hello. How are you? I'm excellent. Great music, by the way. I am jazzed up. <laughs> we try to get it started right. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm glad to be here. It's actually, I think, one of your first shows, uh, Alton Wright, Al Wright, uh, who's on Absolutely. our board of directors, who uh, introduced us and said, Mark, you got to talk to Kenny. Kenny's the guy. He told me that. Okay. And, um, and so, listen, I am so delighted that you uh, said yes to the invitation and I'm so delighted that you are here and those that are here, um, I'm glad to get to know you. And so I just wanna jump right in. I appreciate uh, of your busy schedule. I, I appreciate you being with us tonight, but listen, I wanna just talk a little bit about your journey, but just in my own research, I know that you've had a very successful career in entertainment, in in the in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles and Hollywood. And so just very quickly, as you tell us about your journey, how does your journey take you from Hollywood uh, back here in Savannah, Georgia? Well, that's an interesting question. And it's a, it's an interesting journey. I actually was in, my wife and I were um, in LA. That's where we met for 15 years. I worked for different studios there. I've been in New York for the last 20 years, uh, working for different studios there. I ran a division of Miramax which is owned by Disney. I had my own companies and I got invited down to the SCAD Film Festival by Danny Filson from SCAD. And 
you know, I, I grew up in the South, would always go through Savannah, never stayed here. Um, and when I came here, I fell in love with the city, love history, um, love the, the, the historic district, to pair, uh, exactly like a back lot for a studio anyway. So I came down here with the aspirations of building a film studio, actually. That's why we came down here and convinced my wife, um, you know, it's time to move. Kid moved out of the house. We're empty nesters. Nothing's keeping us in New York. Got me off that train in that three-hour commute a day. And we moved down here three days before the pandemic hit in 2020. And then everything shut down. So I got to see a different Savannah that a lot of people don't do. And you got to do a lot of soul searching in that time, Kenny, too. And Absolutely. yes, I've had a very successful 35 career and a 35 year career in the film business. I helped make like 400 movies on the business side of it. So sales, distribution, finance. And I talked to my pastor here. He says, Mark, you're going from a life of success to one of substance. And when I got the calling to do the Boys and Girls Club, I've gone at it both hands and head and feet and body and everything into this thing. So that's kind of how I ended up here in Savannah. That is so awesome. And I know Frank Callen's Boys and Girls Club coming up on celebrating 100 years. And uh, I, I thought that was amazing. And so anytime I hear of a person who has lived to be 100 or an organization that's been around for 100 years, it, it says to me that they, that person, that organization has done something right. And so now that you're here as the CEO at this point, celebrating 100 years, what can you say Frank Callen Boys Club has done right for the last 100 years? Well, actually over 100 years. We're, what we're celebrating actually is our 100 year anniversary of being the first chartered Boys and Girls Club in the state of Georgia. 1922, we chartered into the Boys and Girls Club, but the name is the important thing, Frank Callen. Why we're called Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club and not the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Savannah is because Frank Callen is the man who had the vision. In 1917, Frank Callen was a probation officer here in town in Savannah and saw a way to get young boys off the street was with athletics and keep them safe and get them in. And that's the whole crux of the organization, why we're successful. And the other thing is the alumni is so strong here. And I have to mention it right now. We just lost one of the best that we ever had just two weeks ago, Walter B. Simmons. Walter was, they called him 49. He just died at 95. And I had the pleasure of speaking with him just a week before he passed away. And he was what the club is all about. Why a lot of the people keep coming back. Why we now have grandparents sending their kids there. You know, the kids of the kids. But thousands of alumni in this, I mean, great sports athletes, football players that have gone off the NFL to NBA, uh, Major League Baseball, but also great businessmen. And we got my alderman is a former club kid, we call them. Our commissioners are club kids. I've got a provost for a university down in Florida, club kid. So a lot of the people in the 1414 union are club kids. You know, it, it's that is what's made us sustain and grow. They've seen the value in the club and what we've given back. We, you talk about sports, nobody. Nobody, and I know if there are any older ones out there from Savannah, they know about the Jets. Nobody wanted to take on the Jets in this town. Matter of fact, the first um, uh, state championship that we won at the high school was a lot of those players were Jets players from the Boys and Girls Club. So, and that's wow. just continued on. And, and it's that spirit, it's that volunteerism and people coming back is what's made the club sustain for over 100 years. That's good. I've always, I've always heard about, I grew up in Savannah. And so, um, I grew up on the West side. So I spent a lot of my time at the May street YMCA, but mm -hmm. on the West side, it was the May street YMCA. And on the East side, it was the Frank Callen boys club. So yeah. I didn't spend as much time, but I did spend time. I got to go over there. I was aware of Frank Callen boys club, but you know, just to hear, you just gave me a little bit of history with uh, Frank Callen and, and, and what his vision was for this. And um, so speaking of, Frank Callen's vision. I, I was thinking about this. So as you carry the torch on, what, what is your vision for Frank Callen's Boys Club going forward? It's a great question. Look, the vision is to grow. We, the facility where we are, and we're never going to leave that where we are. We're on 510 East Charlton Street, right in the historic district. Beautiful area, buildings there. What we want to do is grow and service more kids. We have about 1,100 members. 
We can do about 300 kids a day is what we're doing now. We want to help and affect and get to more kids. And that's why we, our plan is to grow in West Savannah. We actually have a new unit coming up soon in Liberty County in Hinesville. Oh, wow. You know, our plan is to grow into Bryan County, Effingham County, go into Pooler. And that's why I came. That's why I'm excited. excited. My whole career has been about building things, making movies, you know, and movie business. It's I would call it smoke and mirrors. There's no smoke and mirrors now. It's real life. These kids are the best sales tool you'll ever have. They are amazing. These kids, they're so smart, so well behaved. And I was sold right when I walked in the door. I said, this is something I want to be a part of. Absolutely. And so we have the chat going as we speak. And so my wife is on. And so she's curious to know some of the movies you've worked on in your in your career. Um, well, I've been a long time. So it depends on how many movies you've seen. But if you talk about big ones, commercial successes, Chicago, Sin City, the Spice Kids series, Scream, Scary Movie, um, wow. Talented Mr. Ripley, um, uh, did some great movies in Hollywood that we did, like The Usual Suspects. Um, just goes on. I mean, when you when you're in as long as I have, they're all all great. You know, some are business, some are not. You know, but it, it's just a challenge, and it's usually the ones you don't expect to be successful that are some of the best. One I did was called Death at a Funeral. Now you may be more familiar with the version that Chris Rock made. It was a remake. The original version was actually directed by Frank Oz, and it was a British farce. So this movie was so good, Chris Rock, Rock watched, he goes, I want to remake this thing. He actually used the same script and the same little guy, Frank, you know, in the, in this, in the coffin and stuff. But it's just a hysterical, fun little farce that we've done. Um, wow. and, and as I said, I really enjoy that. I know you do some acting. I checked you out. You're really good. You got a good career in that, too. Well, I'm just trying to. I'm just getting my feet wet, and, and uh, I'm excited to see what the future holds. But I, I uh, was bitten by the the acting bug, and so we, I'm I'm excited about the future and, and see what I can get my hands into. Yeah, and look, Definitely. I'm still helping people that you know. The the one thing that you can go to school and they'll teach you how to make films, but they'll never teach you how to talk to investors and how to look at what's a waterfall. How do you really make your money back? That's the important side. You have the best ideas, but if you can't get it financed, the idea is still here, right? And Absolutely. I used to have, I mean, I'd get scripts from people like my mailman in LA. I wrote a script. I said, great, how many have you written? One. I said, then that's a hobby. That's not a career. You need to write more because the more you do, the more gigs you do, the better you get. You know, just like with sermons, the more you do, the better you get. And you Absolutely. learn from it. And that's kind of where we want to take it with the kids and teach them these life skills that we have, you know, to get better and better and better. Because Kenny, it is so competitive now for jobs. When when I was coming up, you may have had six people going for the same job. Now they got 6,000 people going for the same job. It's crazy. So that if we can impart some of that knowledge, some of those skills to these kids, that's what I want to do and what we're trying to do with the Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club, to give them that edge, to give them the leg up, to go in there and get those great jobs. Absolutely. And I... In my research, I also saw that you actually grew up around the Boys and Girls Club. I did. I did. Look, I didn't come from great means. I came from a small town in North Carolina, High Point, North Carolina. And it's funny, when I moved here, I'm a Mason myself and uh, a Shriner, and I'm driving the kids to the shrines uh, for the hospitals. And they asked, where are you from? I said, I'm from the South. And they said, where in the South? I said, North Carolina. I go, uh-uh. That word North, you're disqualified. So <laughs> I'm yeah. learning to say the Carolinas. Um, but it was there where... You know, I played football and basketball and I, and I wasn't great, but I saw mentors that helped you achieve things. I tell you that one of the first stories I had that happened to me when I came to Frank Callen, I was fed up with all the reports and things first week getting there. And I went to the gym. I just put my stuff down. I saw a young man reminded me of me. I wasn't a great athlete. I wasn't in great shape, um, but he was shooting the ball. And I was our, one of our coaches, Larry Johnson's there. Larry's an amazing basketball coach. Um, would have been a pro. His son's now one of the big AAU um, kids coming up. He said to kids, he said, just keep shooting, just shoot, just shoot. And all of a sudden he started hitting and hitting. They were playing a game of horse. And you could see the smile on his face, the confidence going. And that's what it's all about. Building those confidence in these, these young, you know, uh, minds and these people. That's all they need. And now, you know what? That kid has never picked last for basketball anymore. 
Wow. And he's still bragging and smiling about that game with the coach. So it's just, it's just great seeing that. And I love being part of that. Yeah, that, that's good. And, and you mentioned the sports and I remember when I was growing up, uh, the boys club it was, mm. for short, it was the boys club always had a team in Savannah. And okay. so, um, so, so do you still continue those, um, I, uh, football teams and do you- absolutely river boys yeah. are out there, you know, we're sponsoring them. The 14, 14 come in to help during the pandemic because we financially couldn't do it. And because of pandemic couldn't. So we're doing that jointly with them and local volunteers. Look, my thing coming in is we shouldn't be divided. We should all be joined together to try and help. So working with other clubs, the Y Jenkins, wherever we should all be working together for the same goal, which is for these kids. Right. And, and that's why I came. I saw, how do you really make effective change in a community? It's with the youth. That's what we're trying to do. And, and I can tell you right now, you know, our kids are doing amazing things. That is awesome. I, I, uh, I guess my heart is for the youth as well. I taught elementary school for some years. Um, I, I did fourth and fifth grade in Atlanta and Savannah. Oh, wow. And I know that foundation is so important. And so it sounds like you all are a part of laying that solid foundation for these children as well. Well, absolutely. Our kids, we have them there from age five to 18 years old is what the Boys and Girls Club of America is. So, you know, we get them at five, you know, and the, the, the younger ones don't have any say in it. It's the parents seeing them there. And look, it's only $20 a year to join. So you're talking about a place that parents are going to send the kids that's going to be safe. That's our number one priority is safety with these kids. But we're also going to educate them. They're going to have fun, you know, and they're going to make friends. There's no bullying, by the way, loud at the Boys and Girls Club. So they actually become bonded like family. We are family. Um, and the alumni will tell you that. They still come back in. I see some of these alumni coming in smiling, going, man, I remember playing ball here. And coming in. We used to, I think, have a unit in the West uh, Y. I was out there. Um, I went to the Thursday minute, uh, morning men's breakfast meeting out there and met mm -hmm. with them. And I, that, uh, I would love to see that Y back up the way it was in the 70s and 80s. I hear that the pool was rocking. I'd love to see that pool open again and doing the same things. And, and hopefully we can get the energy and, and excitement back into these organizations in the city the way it was. And that's what I'm hoping that I can bring. And that's one thing that I know I have is the energy to try and do that and to talk to people like yourself and other people in the community. It takes a village, it really does. It, it does. And you mentioned the, the life skills. I want to ask you, uh, a, a couple of examples of the life skills that, that you teach. I, and then on the other side, um, I'm a chaplain with the police department. So a lot of times um, we, we have experience with the youth and a lot of times it's, it's after they have made some decision. Uh, but, but I see you, you said you were doing things like sharing with them life skills. What are some of the skills that you share with, with youth? Well, we actually have a gang prevention unit. Um, we have Adrian Gates and uh, our our program director, Mike Hamilton, who probably a lot of people know him. They head that up. And it's to try. We work with the schools. We hear, you know, the kids that are missing, cutting class, that kind of things. And the schools will tell us and they'll send them to us. And those kind of programs, we're working with Money Matter programs so kids can learn how to manage their money. I actually started an e-sport e-coding class because the ones I want to get to right now are the teens. The, the youth, those younger ones, the parents are going to send them. They have to come, right? They're going to have a great time. We love it. It's about getting those teens back involved, you know, and, and getting our, our weight room fixed up and getting, you know, great activities for them upstairs. But, you know, look, the, the, the safety in the environment is part of it, too. They feel safe there. It, it, it is a safe place for them. And it's always been about that. You know, the Frank Allen Board of the Girls Club has always been a place where those youth can feel safe. I was going to ask you about that too. Speaking of safety, that was one of the questions I want to ask because of course, safety is on everybody's mind these yeah. days because of what's going on in, in the world. And so I'm just glad that that safety is your number one priority. It's a number one priority in every boys and girls club across America. Kenneth. I mean, that's it. Cause when you're, if I was leaving my baby there, that's what I'd want. You know, Absolutely. and we're helping so many, look, our motto is we, we, give the kids the opportunity, especially the ones that need it most, to become productive, caring, and responsible citizens. And we're doing so great with that. Like I said, for over a hundred years, you know, our look, we know where our kids are in those most crucial after-school hours between three and 6.30, they're with us. 
They're not doing Thank anything you. wrong. They're with us. You know, and we, you know, we sat with the mayor and we talked about that. We talked about, you know, why we're successful at it, you know, and, and why our metrics are that, look, right now we got 98% of all of our kids that are graduating out of the program are graduating high school on time. Oh, over 90% wow. of those, over 90% of those kids are going on to secondary education. And about 92% of our kids right now are at grade level in math and reading. That's all after school. So we're getting great kids coming out of the school system. I've been on the phone with Dr. Levette, by the way, who spent a lot of time with her father at the club too. That's what I said. The lineage here at the club is a built into the fabric of this community. And I'm sure a lot of the people there that are online with you are going, I remember Frank Callen. Now we became boys and girls in 96, but it was the boys club then, right? The boys yes. club. So many girls that came to that club too. So my thing is let's get that energy back. Let's get those people in there. You know, we have plans right now to build a brand new facility in Liberty city. We bought land right there on ACL Boulevard. And that's the mm -hmm. next chapter of what we want to do and get that going in a state of the art facility that we can also do, you know, um, senior education during the day when the kids are at school and use it for the whole community at large. You know, but I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mark. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, there's a question coming right now asking, do you have programs for parents? Well, we do. Well, look, the, the program for parents, we're actually helping with the, some of the money matter programs and how to manage your money. We got another great example, Raycon, and he's probably he's going to find that I said this. This kid came through our program from five years old, right? He decided he didn't want to go to college. Not everybody needs to go to college. He got into 1414. This young man at 25 years old just bought his first house. I don't know about you. I didn't buy my first house. So I was like 35. Okay. That's, that's okay. a success. That's a confident young man and a productive citizen in this community. And we want to turn out more of those. We're going to be working with Savannah Technical College. You know, we just had meetings with them about doing um, workforce development programs with them. We've been in with Al's help, thankfully. Uh, met with uh, um, Mark Bennett and the people at Gulfstream to start doing more workforce development with them. Uh, Jay Thompson has a great program called Excel, which he actually drives his truck up, and on the back of the truck, he's pulling a trailer that has riveting machines and everything. He's worked with automotive dealers and life skills that they need to have. So, you know, not everybody needs to go to college. Some people want to go in right into the workforce and do that. And that's great. We just want to give them the opportunity to do that. And we can help some of those adults too with some of those things. Listen, if if I had never heard of Frank Callen Boys Club until tonight, I'm already sold on, on what you're doing and, and the great work and the legacy that already exists and, and that you're building upon that. And uh, this is so awesome to hear about it. And And one of my favorite actors, Denzel Washington always gives the Boys and Girls Club credit for his success. And so you mentioned some of the local uh, people who have been. Are there any other celebrities be besides Denzel who? who As a matter of fact, I just, I, just saw Denzel. I, just, I just had breakfast with him at the National Conference in Chicago. Then he got up on stage with uh, Magic Johnson. And Magic is a product of the Boys and Girls Club. And then he got up there with Courtney B. Vance, who's a product of the Boys and Girls Club, and John Quinones, a product of the Boys and Girls Club. And I mean, Shaquille O'Neal, Jason Derulo, Terrell uh, um, Owens, Mark Wahlberg, you name it. And these people are coming out. It was the Boys and Girls Club who gave them, like, I, look, my thing with the kids, I went and asked them, what's your dream today? What do you want to be? And that's where it helped me to dream big. You know, I have some kids that say, I want to be a football player. And I say, that's great. But the other day I had a young lady, I said it to her. She goes, I want to be a chef. I'm like, oh, my God. We got the best chef in all of Savannah right here, Rashama Bailey. I walked my butt over to the Gray restaurant, got her card, and sent an email to her and John O, the owner of the restaurant, right away to say, Mashama, I got a young lady that wants to be a chef. I'd love for you to come in and talk to them. It's those kind of touch points that I want these kids to have to dream big, you know, that they can achieve greatness, you know, and do anything. And if that's being a carpenter, be a great carpenter, own your own business, control your own destiny, right? You want to work for a corporation? Go to Goldstream, great corporation. Go to the port, work for the Georgia Port Authority. You know, Hyundai's coming to town. We're going to have 
7,000 jobs for people to be there. So I just see so much opportunity. That's why I came. That's why I agreed to do it. I see the opportunity. I can feel the opportunity right here. And what's going to happen here? It's just going to explode. Brunswick has six clubs. Why doesn't Savannah have six clubs? Right? Absolutely. If you have a vision, it'll come and it'll be there. I got a feeling they're on the way. But listen, I, I got it. You, you just touched my heart a, mi a minute ago with the with the chef story. Yeah. And and that and that speaks to who you are. For for us who are getting to know you for the first time, to think that you would hear someone say, I want to be a chef, and then you go find the greatest chef in the city so that they can be connected. That wow, you just touched me with that. I'm telling you. That, that that, awesome. She's born and raised here in Savannah. She studied in France, she's in New York City, and she is the example of what these kids need to look up to and what you can do. That's what I'm saying. Our, our assistant fire chief, Kitchen Junior, it's a club kid, played a year of basketball here. I went to see him. My flag wasn't up and it bugged me. You know, we have so many veterans here in town. And the first thing I did is, how am I going to get this flag up? I can't afford a, a, a cherry picker or something. And I said, I'm going to call the fire department. So I walked over to the fire department in downtown. And that's where I met Kitchen. He said, well, I'm a club kid. I'm like, all right, I'm in. And they called me and they sent the fire truck out there. Not only to hang the flag up, they sent ladder truck number five. I'm calling out to all the guys from ladder truck number five and let the kids see what it was like to be a fireman. Get put on the equipment, go through the mm. truck. Say the difference between a ladder truck and a, and a water truck, right? Next day, what do you want to be? I had eight firemen, girls and boys, by the way. Wow. You know, I want to be a fireman. You know, we had our big um, come out and play, play day for Boys and Girls Club of the Week out at. Um, uh, Mashamba Bailey, oh, no, at um, Mother Matilda Beasley Park. A lot of people will know that was called, I think, the dungeon um, for yes. Mike Callenberg. That's where you played, right? You were scared to come to the dungeon. The dungeon, um, that's it. But we had we had the firemen out there, and they were getting pelted by water balloons. I, I want those kids to experience those things. I want them to be with the police. I want them to say they don't have to be scared of these guys. They're there to help them, right? To get involved and do that. Paramedics. Great jobs in this community for them to be part of. That is so, that is so amazing. Those are such great stories. Um, like I said, I, if, if I wasn't on board with the Frank Callen Boys Club, I, I am tonight. Th this is so, so great. And I want everybody that's listening tonight to hear that this, this is something worth, this is worth our time and worth our energy and worth our effort to get behind um, what you're doing. Um, I, I wanted to ask you another question. So, so it, it's summertime, and um, so your your summer programs. What, what 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 kind of things are you doing for the for the summer? We kind of rotate them the same way we do in the after school program. So the kids are coming in, they're playing. First thing, I've got those kids from eight a.m. till nine p.m. Some of them, okay, really. So, yeah. All day long. So when the parents get off at 630, they want to pick them up. They can come, but they can stay later. It's mainly the teens that are later playing basketball. Um, but we have them come in. We take them because it's so hot here during the morning is when we take them outside of the park. I actually have, I started a new crew called the CC Club. The clean, you remember CC Music Factory? Well, they're my yeah. cleanup crew. So we go around the club, go around the neighborhood. We're teaching them about community involvement and what it means, what's biodegradable, what's not. I mean, it just, it bugs me to know in when I see trash out there and just people throw it out there. You know, I live right off the park here and I'm like out there, I'm like the trash can's right next to you. Well, you know, right. it's like, just take that extra step, learn that extra step. So, you know, just simple things like that, but they're learning money matters. They're doing those IXL programs during the summer. You find out kids lose about two months of everything they learn during the year at school during the summer hours, not our kids. Our kids are advancing. Our kids are ahead. You know, the summer program for 10 weeks, Kenny, was only $175. You know, it's not about the money at the club for the kids. We're getting the money out of the grants. The United Way is a huge sponsor for us. And then also those gifts, those donations, you know, those sustainable gifts that we need from the local community. You know, and, and I put it like this. I'm like, if you're talking about an investment, what's your ROI? What's your return on investment? Mm -hmm. I can tell you what it is with us. 98% going on graduating high school. 90%, like I said, going on to secondary education. Now, if I had to put my money in something, in a nonprofit, that's where I'd want to be. You know, that's why I agreed to come on here because of success. And by the way, our club, this is something else. They measure the 
engagement and what the club members um, think about the club. The Savannah Club, Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club, is the only club in America with 100% satisfactory. I'll say it again, 100% satisfactory. The average in the rest of the clubs is about 70, maybe 50. We started at 77. These kids love where they are. My staff is amazing. You know, starting with my senior unit director, Karen Hamilton, it's been there over 19 years, started as a volunteer. My mm. program director, Mike Hamilton, over 30 years now. Um, I'll give wow. you another example. I was at a mixer for the, um, for the city uh, uh, chamber of commerce and I had a young lady come over to me, she had her name on, she's uh, a teacher over at Savannah High. And um, she goes, you're with Frank Callen? She's looking at my title and said, yeah. She goes, is Miss Reynolds still there? I said, yes, she is. She goes, she was my teacher there. Now, Miss oh, Reynolds wow. teaches small kids. She's been there 20 years. This young lady went on. She got a scholarship to play basketball in Boston for a Division three school. Came back. Now she's the assistant coach at uh, Savannah High. And I think she's the softball coach. And that's the example. You're talking about alumni and what we put out there. Another great alumni, and I think a lot of people know um, she's a rapper here. She actually won the Golden Buzzer from uh, Simon Cow. Um, you know her name? Say her name. Uh, fl 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 Flage. 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 Okay. Right. Flage is a new, one of the number one recruits. She's just now starting as a freshman at LSU for basketball. She's a oh, star. Wow. And it was the Boys and Girls Club. And, you know, the examples of there's a young lady who never got to see her. He was murdered before she was even born. My youth of the year, my youth of the year at one year old was climbing on the bodies of his parents that were assassinated. So raised by grandparents, it, amazing stories of just these kids overcoming so many great odds, you know, to get where they are. And he, he he's amazing. So, yeah. you know, that's why I'm excited to be there every day. I see these kids, I've given them high fives. You got to come in. I want you to come in next week. I want, I want to come in. And uh, I, 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 just, I haven't been there in so long, but but I look forward to this. And and you are, uh, I think the other thing that I'm enjoying is that I hear you saying I was over there, I was there. So you're out in the city among the people um, letting us know about uh, Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club. I love I love that. I have to. Look, I, and I told that to my staff. I called on my leaders. I said, if you see me here, I'm doing reports and I don't want to be here. I need to be out on the street. I need to be knocking Tuesdays. I knock, I call it knock on doors days. You know, I used to call it dialing for dollars. Now I'm knocking right. on doors and I'm telling, I ran into a young lady at the Chase Bank when I was going down the street. Right. And she goes, I was a low night, Frank Callen. I said, you got kids and they're not there. Why? She goes, I don't know. I didn't think about it. Well, now you have, you know, for $20 a year, talk about, child care you're coming in a safe place for your kids to be you know they're going to learn in advance i don't know how you beat it i don't know how you turn it down you know so that that i expect a waiting list that's what we want that's going to be our when we say yes i've got a thousand people waiting we need help building this new place for us this new boys and girls club that by the way they will all be frank callen the one that's in wow. in liberty county it's it's a unit of frank callen We'll be we, never use the Frank, we, ne we will never lose the Frank Callen name. We will never wow. sell that building on East Charlton Street. That, what we plan to do, hopefully one day, is turn out into youth development. You know, but right now, that's what we got. And we plan on going in other parts of town. That's, that's the dream. That's where we're going to be. That is amazing. So speaking of the children and their success, so, so where do you find your tutors? Um, I guess during the year when they come in for homework and I guess you have tutors available. And, and my other question is you were speaking of teenagers and I think about the appetites that they have just in yeah. that. So I guess you got to feed them as well. If they're with you from eight until nine o'clock at night, some of them. We, we do. And uh, through the great graces of uh, American second harvest, every kid gets a meal and a hot meal, you know, every day, summer, School, we get the meal there for them. Now, tutors, we were blessed with a great grant through the government, got the state, um, that we've got now certified teachers and tutors that are in there doing one-on-one -on -one studies with them. I have amazing Dr. Cummings, and she teaches our STEM program. With kids have microscopes looking at petri dishes and learning about organisms and learning about why you need to wash your hands during COVID. Why don't touch your face or put your fingers in your mouth? Simple things, right? 
life skills when you're talking about like that, like how to shake somebody's hand and look them in the eye. That's how you get a job, especially when you're talking to old guys like me, right? That, that, and that it's those kind of life skills and things you need. You know, you need to learn how to navigate those things through life. And that's what those teachers, those those great volunteers. We have Miss uh, Miss Casey. She um, she teaches sewing. She comes down and with her sewing machines in a wagon and the kids sit down. She takes three or four and she teaches them life. Like we used to have home ec, right? We used to have shop class. Right. Those were great skills that we learned with the kids don't get today. And we have boys and girls learning sewing. It's great. You know, and she gets them up to making dresses. One young man made one for his grandmother. It was amazing. So and wow. you, can come, you can come in and see some of the pictures of some of these things they've done. I, I look forward to it. And um, and speaking of the help, now I want to give one more shout out to Mr. Mr. Al Wright, who is yes. um, uh, one in a million in, in my book. I appreciate him for introducing me to you. And, and he is just he is one of the greatest guys I've ever met in my life. Greatest smile you ever find. He's ne I've never seen this guy upset. I don't want to see him upset. <laughs> but the kindest heart, the kindest man. I mean, you know, his whole life here in Savannah and his life story is an amazing story itself. Um, you know, nobody gave him anything in life. He worked his butt off for everything. And now he's giving it back and helping these kids at the Boys and Girls Club. And I'm so blessed to have him on my board. So blessed to have, oh, John, I mean, Mr. Brooks, who's our chairman, uh, 30 some odd years working in Boys and Girls Club and giving back and moved here um, and, you know, took on a tough thing. COVID wasn't easy for any of us, you know, and the club was only closed about six months. We figured out a way how to get these studies to the kids and get them working mm. online. So we, we didn't close down that long. These kids were working through that whole time. So and it was that is our amazing. Karen and everybody else was so great in doing it. Um, that, you know, we were able to do those kind of things. So, so one question is here. Do you, do you provide transportation for the children? Well, we do during the school year. We have, we've had to, the school used to drop them off when they had bus drivers, but there's a shortage of bus drivers. So we go to about four schools. Now we pick up the kids and bring them back. The parents pick them up during the summer program. Parents are dropping the kids off. Right. Um, but we have transportation. We do a lot of great field trips. We've been to the African uh, American Museum. We take them to Chuck E. Cheese. They're going to be this week. I think we got the swimming finally open. The pools are open, so they'll be going. And hopefully, we're learning life skills and learning how to swim um, in 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 the places. But we're taking them everywhere and giving them all the kind of experiences we can. You know, one of our former um, uh, board members was uh, Ted Denning, uh, Dinner. I'm sorry, from Savannah Bee Company, and uh, we're going to get them out there to see how honey's made and all those kind of things. But you know. Those are the kind of supporters have been behind us and helping us. And, you know, Mike Hostello was on the board, um, Vic Bell, great supporters of the club, great alumni. I mean, in the past, I got to mention besides Mr. Simmons, Mr. Um, um, oh, I can't think, Hughes, who, who, uh, Holmes, Mr. Holmes, who passed away during COVID. Um, he's yes. going to be honored. He's going to be honored as and put into the um, Hall of Fame for the Boys and Girls Club of the state of Georgia. So he's going to get that great honor. Um, so, and it, again, it's with the help, the support financially and, and, you know, volunteerism and just talking. I mean, Gary, um, Gary from 520 Wings and 520 Tavern. Yes. Amazing, amazing backup for the club. Just saw him today at the club. Um, he yeah. brought out the truck for the kids at play day and gave them all free funnel cut cake. And he, he's feeding them all the time and supporting the club. So it's those kind of volunteers and, um, you know, business leaders in the community that have been great supporters over the years for the club that's made us keep on going. That's awesome. So tell us about the celebration that you have uh, coming up. Uh, I know you got something great planned. Well, uh, we have this, this coming Thursday night at the club from five to six 30, we're kind of making it an open house for people who hadn't been there in a way. So from five to five 30, Run around, meet some of the instructors. I got Dr. Cummings is going to come there and talk about what she does. Um, see the club, see what we're in, you know. The, and and then at about five thirty, quarter to six, we're going to start a program. Um, and we've got actually the president, Mr. Jim Clark, the president of the Boys and Girls Club of America, is coming and going to be our keynote speaker. And uh, we're going to have another number of other surprises from, you know, some of our loved uh, politicians in the area. Um, 
Senator Warnock's um, deputy director was just in today, who's a local Savannah guy. And uh, we're going to have some special messages from him and hopefully some of the other people in the community. But it's going to be a great, great celebration. And then don't forget, also on Saturday is our Hall of Fame brunch out there at Georgia Southern at Armstrong uh, from 11 a.m. So it's a big weekend for Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club. And we, it should be. Look, we want them, everybody remember 100 years of service to this community. That is amazing. And so would you tell us again where the Boys Club is located? Well, Boys and Girls Club is located, please. Yep. Someone just wanted you to uh, give us that location one more time, please. 510 East Charlton Street between Price, right, and East Broad. Been there for over, well, since 1960. So <laughs> you're not going to see big colors and big signs because they don't let us do that in the historic district. But it's about a 13,000 square foot building. You can't miss it there. Absolutely. So and, and um, I can invite anybody that wants to come in, just knock on the door and, and come in and see us and come and say, hey, Mark, I'm here to try and see the club, how I can help, whatever you want me to do. OK, and absolutely. So I want to ask you for anybody who's interested in helping yeah. or, or volunteering. How can how can we how can we help? Are, are there guidelines for volunteers or well, guidelines we want to give? Yeah, by, volunteers that want to work directly with the kids um, without supervision have to get background checks. That's one of the safety things that Boys and Girls Club makes sure we do. If not, and if they're supervised, like a day of giving and that kind of thing, we're good to go because we'll have people around and people like when we had the come out and play day at the play date for the kids. We had a number of volunteers come out for that. Um, for giving, um, I think I sent you a QR code you can put up and, and talk about yeah. that. Um, or you can go to our new website. We're getting it up and going now, which is uh, fcbgc.org or frankcallenboysandgirlsclub.org. Um, and you can go there. Um, look, you know, the other thing, volunteers, that's how we, we survive by that, you know. And we're always looking for people who want to get involved and help our kids out. So, Absolutely. Go ahead. And I do want to put up, I want to put the, um, I want to put that up. I tried to put it small in case yeah. someone wanted to give right now and, and it wouldn't open on my phone. But when I put it up like there that, it opened up immediately and went straight. It's beautiful to me. You don't need to see my head. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to, and yeah. I, I tried to do it small, but if anybody wants to give right now, uh, you take a picture of that with your phone, you uh, hold your phone there, open the camera up and uh, put it right there. And it opens up to PayPal. Yeah, it'll um, take you to pay which is amazing. And 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 Kenny, like I said, it you don't have to twenty dollars. You know, we're talking about sustainable gifts, monthly, whatever. It all goes back to the kids. You know, that's what the thing is with the club. This is all going back to the programs we do for them. You know, the amazing staff that we have. You know, we need some new things. I can tell you that that weight room. I need some new weights for those for those teens in there. So if anybody wants to help me with a weight room, that's great. We need yeah. some painting done around the club. Anybody want to volunteer and do that? We love that too. You know, our saying at the Boys and Girls Club is give us your time, your talent, your treasures. If you can't give me your time, give me your talent, your treasures. You know, we're just here for you to serve the community and help these kids become great, caring, productive citizens. Well, Mr. Mark Lindsay, I thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, and there may be people, uh, we have so many people who are not from Savannah who yeah. may have been introduced to the Frank Callen Boys Club, Boys and Girls Club tonight. But I thank you for your time. I know you are busy. Uh, I hear you seeing you all over this city, but I look forward to meeting you in person and um, and also just supporting the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I, I think what you're doing is amazing. Our heart is for the youth and, and I don't believe they're our future. I believe they're the, our present. They are. And really see, right. We sow today, we'll, we'll see the harvest of those uh, in the future. But I want to thank you for your time, sir, and for what you do. Thank you. No, we thank uh, you. you with the Boys and Girls Club. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk about it. And it's people like you uh, working in this community that help us achieve the goals that we want to do. So thank you. Absolutely. And uh, I'm looking forward to the the uh, luncheon, the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. Miss Mack. You're going to meet Miss Mack. She's being honored. She was an amazing force at the club. Um, two other people who have already uh, passed away. One, Miss Hodge, who dedicated the building to us, uh, uh, passed away. So, uh, but it's going to be a great time to get up and talk about the club. And you'll get to meet our youth of the year. I want you to meet him. He's an amazing young man. Um, he's a star in the making. You know, and I know Absolutely. about stars. 
you know, when you see him, you're like, catch on to that one because he's going to be big. Well, listen, I think you are amazing. Thank you again for your time. I also mm-hmm. want to thank Mr. Al Wright for this introduction, uh, for us to have this conversation. And for those who have tuned in tonight, I really appreciate you for tuning in and um, however you can, however you're moved to uh, uh, assist and help out with the Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club. I know it will be so appreciated and and we look forward um, uh, to meeting you and and I wish you nothing but success Thank in you. your future. I'm, I'm glad you came here to Savannah. Savannah is greater because uh, you're here and, and our and our children, our youth, are in good hands. So thank you again. And those of you who came in tonight, thank you for sharing with us. And listen, have a great night until our next conversation. But tonight, Mr. Mark Lindsay, CEO of Frank Callen Boys and Girls Club. Thank you, sir. And have a great night. You too. Thank you. Good night. Thank everybody. you. Bye-bye.